yeah, a couple of people have asked um, if that's our most complete performance of the competition. And, you know, it certainly was, um, you know, a good night. doesn't always work out like that, but I think we've shown at times throughout the tournament, um, you know, our best is good enough to beat anyone and particularly that run of games that we had it back in Perth. Um, you know, we had some pretty comprehensive wins batting first, um, you know, and being able to take 10 wickets as well. So we take a lot of confidence out of a number of occasions now that we've been able to perform really well um, with all facets, with bat and ball and in the field. And um, you know, to, to be able to win and play like we did last night, we take a lot of confidence out of that. We can't wait for tomorrow night. And one player who was one of the standouts, your, your old housemate, Cam Bancroft, he's, he's had a, a fair journey, I guess. How did you see his performance last night? I mean, he's been on the, the bench half of the tournament. You must have been proud for him to make the most of his opportunity at the top of the order there. Yeah, we've been really fortunate that we've been winning a lot of games of cricket and the nature of being a successful team is that you're going to have guys who are quality cricketers sitting on the bench and running drinks for the big portions of the tournament. And, you know, we're certainly in that basket. Um, you know, the likes of Joel Paris and Matt Kelly, a couple of fast bowlers who have performed brilliantly for us over a number of years now in the big bash. And then to have a couple of test cricketers in Curtis Patterson and Cam Bancroft also sitting you know, in the wings for the majority of this tournament, you know, it's a luxury for us. And, you know, it's unfortunate for those guys that they haven't been getting the opportunities that they would love and we'd be love to give them. But, um, you know, when an unfortunate last minute incident happens, like with Jace at training the other day, um, you know, to have a couple of test cricketers waiting to, to line up to be opening the batting for us, it's a luxury. And, um, you know, we know that Jace is going to go through a fitness test um, before the game tomorrow, but... Um, you know, it's a nice position to be in for me where I'm not too stressed either way. We'd love to have Jace come back. He's been, um, you know, a superstar of international cricket for a number of years now, and he's been brilliant for us in this tournament. But should he not pull up and be able to take his place in the 11, to have Cam Bancroft, who's shown over a number of years that he's capable of playing match winning innings um, as he did last night, um, you know, we're very fortunate to be in that position. What actually happened with Jason? I've heard a, a couple of different things. Someone said soccer. Someone said it wasn't soccer. Someone said he was celebrating. What what actually happened with Jason? And what what's your gut feel with him? What uh, sort of chance do you give him of playing tomorrow? It was pretty innocuous. Um, I wish it was on film because he would have looked like a bit of a clown. But he <laughs> was changing direction with no balls around him, no other people around him, and just went over on his ankle. It was one of those sort of freak incidents. Um, you know, I don't think at the time no one really knew what was what was happening, but you know, it's unfortunate for him. You know, he's been such an important part of our team, and like most superstars of international cricket, they love playing in big games and they pride themselves on their performances in big games. And you know, I know he was shattered to not be able to take his place in the eleven. But that being said, um, you know, the amount of energy and um, you know, positive vibes that he brought to the change room throughout the game was unbelievable. And, um, you know, he's just been a, a great squad member, whether he's in the 11 or not. And uh, just one more for me, if, if he if he does play, is it a matter of Cam Bancroft being the last one in, for, first one out, or is it uh, is it not as simple as that after his half century last night? Yeah, we haven't had our selection meeting yet, but, um, you know, it's probably the case. But, you know, like I said before, either way it falls. You know, I've got so much confidence in... Um, you know, all of our batters, um, you know, we've been playing some consistent cricket for a number of games now and, um, you know, everyone feels like they're in good form, which is not always the case in T20 cricket, which can be a little bit hit and miss. So we've got a luxury of, you know, a number of guys to pick from and um, we know that there's going to be some tough, some tough calls. There's going to be some guys disappointed that we're not being able to play in a final, but, uh, you know, that adds a bit of responsibility to the guys who are in the 11 to, to go out and perform well. Great. Thanks, Ash, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Great. Thanks, George. Beck. Hey, Ash, congratulations. Um, at this stage, is um, Jace more likely or unlikely? Uh, it's a good question. I'm actually asking myself the same question. I'm not part of the medical staff. Um, you know, between uh, now and when he did his ankle, he hasn't really been put through many physical tasks. I think the call was made pretty early that he missed the last game and so I know he's going to do a fitness test before the game tomorrow and I think he's waiting as eagle here as you and I are to see um, you know, 
how much he can move and um, what his restrictions are and um, you know, on the back of ha having not been able to really test it, I don't think anyone has a great idea of um, you know, the chances of him playing. Uh, one more from me. Um, Mitch said something last night about playing uh, a bit more with his head than with emotion. Um, was there a, a real sort of um, plan in place going into the game after the after the Sixers smashing, I suppose, and going into this game last night with a bit of a different uh, mindset? Well, for starters, Mitch has got a very big head. So if he's using that, that can only be a good thing. Um, yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, throughout a lot of, iterations of this tournament, we start to create some great rivalries with other teams. And, um, you know, that can be great for the spectators and can be a great spectacle, but you know, sometimes emotions do get involved and, um, you know, we can have some more hated games than others. And, um, you know, there's no secret that the Sydney Sixers are a team that we've had some great battles with over a number of years now, and they're a team that we love to beat. So, you know, we take a lot of lessons out of um, the three games we've played against them so far. It's rare that you get to play against um, you know, one side four times in a competition, but that's the situation we're in at the moment and there's pros and cons to that. But you know, we, we certainly look back and reflect on the three games we've played against them. We take the, the, the learnings out of those games as much as possible and we try and implement new strategies going into the, the fourth showdown against them in a final tomorrow night. Great. Thanks, Beck. Alex Malcolm. Okay, T, well done last night. Um, you mentioned there making adjustments against the Sixers. How do you how do you adjust plans for bowling to Philippi and Vince and also um, O'Keefe and Brathwaite to bowl well against your middle order in the last couple of games? What kind of adjustments do you need to make? Yeah, well, it's pretty easy to sit back and say we'll throw out all the plans that we've we've had to to Josh in the last couple of games. So they haven't worked that well for us. He's been playing beautifully. And um, you know, James Vince as well played really well the other night. Um, the flip side of that is that their middle order haven't had to face a lot of our bowlers. And, um, you know, we've had a couple of off nights against the Sixers um, in this tournament, but more or less our bowlers have been brilliant. Um, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in them, particularly in big games, that they can go a long way towards us winning games. Uh, you know, that, um, you know, there's so much international experience and T20 experience from playing competitions all around the world and our bowling attack. And, um, you know, we've got a lot of confidence in their skills. That being said, we'll sit down and have our planning meeting as we do for every opposition before every game. And, you know, uh, Josh Phillip, you no know, doubt, has created some headaches for us in, in the past. But, um, you know, we'll plan and, um, you know, watch footage and reflect upon the times he's played well against us and think about what we can do differently. And um, you know, I've got no doubt we might see some strategies that are a little bit different to how we've approached um, bowling to, to Josh in the past. And how hard is it for you as skipper to sort of watch the weather radar as you might have done last night and also going to the SCG in terms of what you might do around the toss? Yeah, it's a nightmare to be honest. I'm uh, not a meteorologist by any stretch. And, um, you know, going back to the first final where we played against the Sixers and, um, you know, I, I haven't won many tosses this year, but that was a toss that I won. And, um, you know, I'm happy to put my hand up and say I got that completely wrong. Um, you know, we didn't anticipate the amount of dew that came in to Monica Oval that night against the Sixers. And, you know, that, although our skills weren't as good as they needed to be, the dew probably did play a big factor in the outcome of that game. And, um, you know, so then we knew going into the next final that we needed to be uh, across all of the weather conditions and the case was rain for the last game and it's probably going to be the case for tomorrow night that there's a bit of rain about it. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time looking at the radar and trying to make sense of that. And, um, you know, I'm trained in playing cricket and batting and bowling and looking at where the radars is not my forte. So we were doing, it was a little bit of guesswork, but, you know, I think... Uh, we we're fortunate to have a rain affected game earlier in the season and we sort of took some learnings out of that and once we knew that there was a possibility of being some rain around i think we were as calm as well prepared last night as we could have been for, for that situation and i don't think anything would change going into the game tomorrow night thanks i go well mate thank you thanks alex louis cameron yeah hi ashton just um thinking back a little bit and um, maybe you could reflect on um, just some of the Sixers Scorchers finals that you guys have, have had over the last um, 
few years, what kind of, kind of comes to your, to your mind when you think of um, those battles? Yeah, you're right. There's been a great rivalry over a number of years now. And fortunately, I can say that we've had the wood over them in finals um, over recent times. Um, you know, I think back to, it must have been, uh, I actually can't remember which edition it was, but uh, one of the years that we won the final, we played a semi-final against the Sixers and we were, it was a rain affected game. Craig Simmons got a hundred and we posted over 200 and it started raining and they, uh, we needed to get five overs in um, in the second innings to constitute a game. And as the Sixers were the home side, you know, a washed out result would have meant they go straight through to the final. And we were a minute away from the game being pulled off. We were able to get out there, bowl five overs for the second innings and win a close game. Um, that with the, a super over that we played at the SCG, those games spring to mind. Um, you know, and I mean, there's so many games that we can reel off to a, a final that went down to the last ball at Marnica to us, Maxi Klinger hitting a six to, to win us a final um, at the WACA. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of great memories that we take out of some brilliant clashes against the Sixers. And, um, you know, we take confidence out of our being able to win big games in the past. And, um, you know, we're, feel very fortunate that we've got another opportunity to play in a big game, to play in a final. I think most of us are measured on how well we perform in big games and, you know, tomorrow night's another great opportunity. It's a pretty amazing that, that so many memories come to mind. I mean, all that experience that you do have in, in that squad, is that something you can pass on to, um, I guess, some of the, the newer guys, Aaron Hardy kind of springs to mind, even I don't think Josh Inglis has, might, have, might have played in a, in a final. Can you kind of pass that experience on? Yeah, I think that we've got a lot of guys who have got a lot of experience all over the world and in particular in the Big Bash. And I think that it's a pretty common trend that successful teams in most competitions have got a lot of senior guys who have got a lot of experience. Um, but, you know, I think we've got a nice um, uh, mix, a nice array of senior guys with some, some new younger guys who haven't played as much cricket and, um, you know, you're right, Josh Inglis and Aaron Hardy and guys like that who have come into our team, you know, they've been learning so quickly and, you know, to the point where some of these younger guys have been winning us a lot of games of cricket, you know, it holds the first scorchers in good stead for the future. And, um, you know, those two guys in particular are certainly exciting talents and, you know, for them to be able to get um, some finals experience is only going to hold us in good stead for the future. Thanks, Ashton. Cheers. Thanks, Louis. Uh, Jocelyn? Hi, Ashton. Um, I just had a question. So last time you guys played, the game ended a little bit controversially with AJ bowling a wide and I guess in a way denying James Vince a century. Do you think that has created any extra tension between the two sides and will it kind of add fuel to this fire of a rivalry we were talking about before? Um. Well, I'll say yes, so you can write about it and create some more hype and get some new eyeballs on the on the articles. But, you know, I think that there's so many different factors that come into um, creating tension in a game. There's probably no more motivation than being able to lift a trophy to, um, you know, incentivize playing well. Um, but, you know, I said this on the night of that, that game that anyone who knows AJ Ty knows that he plays the game in the best spirit. And, um, you know, that was an unfortunate end to the game. And, um, I said on that night that I hope it didn't take away from what tracked from how well James Vince played because he, he was brilliant that night. And, um, you know, that being said, to watch AJ bowl last night, he was back to his best and he bowled brilliantly. And, um, you know, we've certainly taken lessons out of losing to the Sixers in Monaco a couple of nights ago. And you know, hopefully we can make some changes and implement them in a, in a, in a big game being final tomorrow night. Yeah. And then do you think um, in terms of, you know, heading into a BBL final, playing a super dominant game a couple of days before with that momentum, is that something you'd prefer as opposed to having like a week off to prepare? Yeah, it's a fine line. Um, you know, only time will tell. Um, ask me on Sunday morning and I'll probably give you a better answer. But, um, you know, I think there's been some clear trends in this competition that, you know, once we've started to play well and win, we've got on some rolls. We won five in a row at one stage and we won three in a row coming into the final. So, we're, um, you know, momentum's certainly been a really important factor for us. And, you know, where you take as much confidence out of your one game as you possibly take, um, you know, after a comprehensive performance last night. So, hopefully that holds us in good stead. We know that this has been a long tournament. We've 
played 16 games now and there's no hiding from the fact that we've got some some tired bodies. Um, you know, that being said, every team in this competition is feeling the same way. And, you know, we've certainly prided ourselves on being a really fit uh, unit for a number of years now. And, you know, our bowlers are doing an amazing job to be able to go more or less unchanged as a bowling unit um, throughout a, a 16 game tournament now is, um, you know, it's a pretty remarkable feat in itself. And, um, you know, our bowlers are more or less holding up really well. And I know that everyone's excited for an, an opportunity to play a 17th game for the season and hopefully we can make it a winning one. Thanks for your time and good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jocelyn. Mark Rennings? Yeah, just a couple, AT. Um, given the Scorchers' remarkable record, um, you've had some great highlights and great titles, but uh, after your poor start to the this campaign, Bogey's position was questioned, the travel, the losing the final. W if you could get across the line tomorrow night, would this be probably the, the best of the lot? Um, and you've been around the, the group for a long time. Please say yes. Um, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, we like to live in the present and every opportunity we get to, to win finals feels like the most important game of our careers. So, um, you know, I know from the outside, four games into the tournament, we hadn't won a game yet. It was pretty easy to put some pressure on, you know, the team and um, Fogsy in particular, which I felt was unwarranted. But, um, you know, we had a lot of belief in ourselves. We knew that we had a good squad. Um, you know, we just hadn't clicked. We felt like we were one good game away from um, you know, starting to be able to get on a roll and, um, you know, to be able to reflect four games in, um, you know, not playing well, not having won any games, to actually sit in that change room and realise that there wasn't much panic at all, which it would have been easy to, you know, forgive guys for starting to push the panic button and worry about the what the rest of the season looks like. We knew it was a, a long season, it was 14 games. We knew we were too good a team to, to keep losing. Our fortunes were going to turn eventually and um, thankfully, um, you know, for our coach's sake, we've been able to take some of the heat off him. Um, you know, he's been brilliant throughout the tournament. The consistency from when we're losing um, to when we're winning, the preparations remain the same and, um, you know, Bogues has been so level-headed throughout a long tournament that, um, you know, we feel as players that we've been able to, um, you know, pay him respect by winning games and hopefully we can um, give him a trophy to lift tomorrow night. And last one from AAT, uh, yourself, um, I know Mitch and, and, and Dorf, you've all mentioned the fact that uh, you're thinking of people in WA with the lockdown, the bushfires, etc. Has that genuinely affected the group, obviously being most of you from here and 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 adding some sort of motivation to, to try and get the job done to, to keep the spirits up over this way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it, it's pretty easy to sit back and um, start to win and complain and think, why me? Why don't we get to play games in Perth? You know, why are we playing away from home so much? But it's pretty humbling to know that, um, you know, in the big scheme of things, we've actually very fortunate to be playing in cricket at all. Um, you know, we're so lucky that we're, we're able to play in another final. Um, coming into this season, you know, we didn't know if there'd be any cricket played at all. And, um, you know, to be able to play four games at home in Perth in front of our home fans, it's more than some other teams have been able to do. And, um, you know, whilst we feel like playing cricket um, is very important, we know there's more important things going on, and particularly at the moment back home with the fires and, um, you know, throwing a lockdown as well. Um, there's a lot of people doing it a lot tougher than we are. And we just feel very fortunate that we're able to go out and play cricket, a game that we love. And hopefully we can lift the trophy and put some smiles on some people's faces back home. Beautiful, mate. Thanks for your time. Thank you.